Oh my gosh, should I go touch it, chat? <laughs> touch me or no balls. Content Warning is the latest game taking the world by storm in a genre that I like to call the four dipshits unite for a questionable cause like. Other popular games in this genre consist of Deep Rock Galactic, Helldivers 2, and of course Lethal Company. In Content Warning, you are aspiring influencers hell-bent on going viral on Spooktube. To do so, you hop in a big old dive bell suspended by a crane, submerge to the old world with a camera and a flashlight, and film as many spooky monsters as you can find. Then you hopefully return in one piece, upload the footage you recorded, watch it back, and use the ad revenue to buy more equipment for better videos. Touch me or no balls. <laughs> he's got balls, he's got balls. And just like Lethal Company, you have a view quota that you have to meet within three days, and if you don't meet it, your channel fails and you literally just die of sadness. It's a simple premise, it's fun, it's relevant to how everyone and their grandma clout chases on the internet, and it allows you and your friends to create a variety of fun videos that you can watch back. Leroy Jenkins! But as a lore guy at heart, I went into this looking for every teeny tiny morsel I could chew on to see what makes the world of content warning tick, and this is what I found. The first thing you'll notice in the game is you live on a bright, colorful, small island suspended on stilts high above a big blue abyss. You have a garden and a bunch of solar panels on the island, so you pretty much have everything that you need to survive. And perched on the edge of your little sky island is a dive bell wired to a crane that you use to submerge into the old world. Spooktube comments on your videos mention that these things aren't exactly cheap to own, but are easy to rent to visit the old world for your bachelor party. So the old world seems to be a place people visit recreationally, for some reason. The old world stands in stark contrast to where you live. It's dark, musty, large, and inhabited by spooky monsters. It becomes pretty obvious that this used to be humanity's home, based on some of the comments that you get on your videos like, our world used to be so big, and I think my grandparents lived around there. So it was relatively recent that everyone had to evacuate the old world, and judging by the state of things, it happened pretty quickly. The factories are still running, there are cars strewn about, and human remains can be found like skulls and rib cages and spinal cords. Go. So while we're not entirely sure what happened to the old world, we know that there was some cataclysmic event that forced everyone to leave. Also, we can deduce that the old world is just Earth, where we currently live, if you're watching this in 2024 at least. This can be figured out from the slide projector on the little island that has pictures of the planet itself, real world locations, as well as a graph of deer populations in the state of Utah for some reason. Wow. As you progress through the slides, things start to get a little bit off. Like this image of a giant ocean wave has a massive figure looming just beneath the surface. The slideshow also kind of just descends into Lovecraftian madness with cryptids, monsters, and what appears to be biblical apocalyptic imagery. Though it's worth noting that none of these images come from religious texts. I did reverse Google image search for a good 45 minutes on all of this, and most of them come from like old textbooks, short stories, and a memoir of some white guy who traveled across Africa in the 1800s and had some pretty racist stuff to say about the people that he met. But I don't necessarily think the source of these images is what matters. I think the long and short of it is the developers were looking for creepy images to illustrate that shit hit the fan for humanity. But what is the shit and what fan did it hit and how did it all go down? As far as I know, Content Warning has no note lying around in the factory of a scientist like lamenting how his plan to create evil destructive life forms surprisingly backfired but we can glean a bit of context from the monster designs and hypothesize what may have happened. So let's just do that. One thing about content warning is it came out like a week ago at the time of writing this, so not everything is known about all of these monsters. Also, I don't think the community has even settled on names for some of these things yet, so it's possible that if you're watching this beyond April 2024 that some of these will be misnamed. And I know a lot of you future people watching this are about to burst a blood vessel unless you go into the comments and say, actually, that's called a shark waffle. So go ahead and correct me to get that slight dopamine hit. Just know that I'm operating off of archaic knowledge from the distant past, which is April 8th, 2024. Now onto the monsters. This one is called the zombie, but I like to call them the snail bros. They just look like human snail hybrids. There's not much to them, but the snail bros are kind of cute. All around good vibes on these boys. Then we've got the ceiling star that I call the Dangles McNasty. That's because it likes to dangle its McNasty, and if you step in it, you get slurped up by it until you either die or somebody manages to yeet an object at it and free you. Next creature on the list is a spider. Just like any human man on a dry spell coming out of a particularly saucy dream, this thing will shoot its sticky web at a high velocity and heaven help anyone who gets caught in it. We also have the barnacle ball, which looks like something that made a game freak developer punch a wall for not thinking of it first. 
Oh, he's using the rabbit thing. Oh my gosh. And we have the eye guy who remains still as a statue until you shine a light in its face. These next three content warning monsters I categorize as the technology gone too far monsters. These guys seem like they were made by humans for whatever reason and then turned on humanity during a great AI apocalypse. We've got the whisk head that charges at you in a straight line and then flops over when it hits a wall. Then there's the robot dog, which is a very clear reference to the AI dog that the NYPD tried to incorporate into its police force a few years back. And the final monster in this category is the Iron Maiden, which is my personal favorite content warning character because what this guy does is it literally abducts one of your party members and holds them hostage until you enter a captcha on its iPad so it can log into Spooktube because it can't pass the captcha itself because it's an AI. It's brilliant. Like I said about 30 seconds ago, I think this category of monsters illustrates that a key part of Content Warning's world building is that technology and rogue AI played a huge role in forcing the inhabitants of Earth to flee their homes, thus making it become the old world. This monster I like to call the slime. All it does is abduct you and take you several rooms away. It doesn't hurt you unless you hit your head against the wall while it's rapidly moving around, which is what happened to my buddy Joe here. It is Ari reporting from Joe's dead body. As you can see, he is very stiff and stinky. Thanks. Bye. Now we have the knife ghost, which looks like a little shithead kid in a ghost costume, but this shithead kid has hops like you would not believe. Oh, oh my God. Next is an ear monster that chases anyone who makes noise and relentlessly pushes them around. This one right here is the little bro, but more commonly known as the mouth. He just likes to sneak up on you and scream. There's not much else to him. Now we have the bomber who, as his name would imply, just kind of chucks bombs at you lives up to its name. The big slap is one that I still haven't had the pleasure of meeting, but supposedly it's just a really tall naked dude that will walk up to you and slap you like you just made an off-color joke at the Oscars. The grabber snake is this centipede looking fellow that will try to collat the squad by picking up one of you and yeeting you into the others. He's fun. The snatcho I don't have any footage of, but just as his name implies, it likes to snatch you and shining a light on it will deter it. And finally, we have the flicker. If you see this thing, you are already dead. It forces you to look at it, illuminates the entire area, and then just wipes you off of next year's census. This one is by far the one that makes me feel like there's a god in the lore of content warning and that he hates all of us. Okay, so at this part of the video, we are moving away from the facts and the evidence and we're getting into what my Ghiblis are telling me about content warning. And while my Ghiblis are pretty convincing, you need to take this with a grain of salt and know that it's just a theory, as former YouTuber MattPat would say. I think that a couple of generations before the events of content warning, at least three elephant-sized shits hit the fan, wiped out most of the population, and forced the leftovers to build up really high, really quick, like a Zoomer hopped up on Adderall playing Fortnite. The first shit I think that hit the fan was environmental in nature. A lot of these monsters in content warning look like they're the product of years of pollution and environmental negligence on the part of humanity. It does seem kind of like they learned their lesson as everything in content warning is now solar powered, but a little too late there. The second shit is obviously rogue AI and other scientific experiments gone horribly wrong. Aside from the Robocop dog and the Iron Maiden that's just an iPad toddler with access to weapons, a lot of these creatures seem like they were created in a lab. So I think in some sort of Resident Evil meets Terminator event, all hell broke loose and man-made abominations just started slapping cheeks across the planet. And this third shit is a little bit more spiritual in nature. I think there is some religious or cosmic or interdimensional cataclysm that occurred to the content warning character's grandparents. I don't know if they looked God straight in the eye as they walked backwards into hell, or if they pissed off the wrong alien, but a lot of these things do look like they are not of earthly origin, even taking into account the sciencey stuff. So whether they're being punished for their sins, or they were invaded by extraterrestrial butt probers, I believe that there is something from beyond our atmosphere or our plane of existence that occurred. The religious imagery on the slideshows kind of support this. So that's what I think is what led our little heroes in content warning to live high up in the clouds. And you might be wondering, well, if all that stuff forced everyone to move to the clouds, why the hell do they keep going back down there to film stuff? The shorter answer for that is, it's content, baby. But the long answer is another reason why I love content warning and this little world that the developers have created. So two generations ago, everybody was forced to move skyward. Now everyone presumably lives on tiny, isolated, man-made islands with limited options of meeting up with each other without running the risk of being torn apart by kids in ghost costumes. So naturally, four dumbasses would think, hey, we're funny and entertaining, let's become content creators. That's literally what happened during COVID. 
everyone was isolated, so everyone and their grandma decided that they'd become content creators. At the center of content warnings, goofy exterior lies a beating heart and a message about the links that we as humans will all go to in order to connect with others and to feel seen. Or it's just about cloud chasing, I don't know. Bye, thank you so much for making it this far in the video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing. I love sharing video game lore and this is a new channel where I get to do that. Also consider checking out my Patreon where you will get early access to not only everything on this channel but everything on my main channel where I talk about Dead by Daylight. So anyway, my name is Nick and I will catch you guys later. Thanks.